Take the tripod! Oh! Welcome back for some more of the Pacific. Quick recap, last episode, we saw the point of view of one Marine in particular, from home straight to combat. We saw the deployment of a group of Marines into the Pacific region of World War II and mutilation, carnage, and a brief look at the Japanese soldiers in general. But let's get into this before we begin. I do want to remind you that you can vote on what I watch, see full length reactions, and get early YouTube edits on my Patreon through the link in the description. If not, just make sure you subscribe or leave a thumbs up on this video if you do enjoy it. Really helps my channel reach a wider audience and I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. But now, it's time for the show. Let's go. They were vastly undersupplied, and many were on the verge of starvation. The Japanese had control of the sea. They could supply their troops, and we couldn't. Gotta steal their food somehow. I developed a sort of a formula in life in which there are times uh, that you just pray and hold on. You would just pray and hold on. Pray and hold on. That's like something you do when it's the end of the world. Wait, isn't that the kid with the heart murmur? So he eventually does go and fight. What the fuck? You see Briggs? No, sir. Oh my god! What the fuck? Are you hit? No. Let's go. Let's go. There's nothing they could do. Take their dog tags and then keep it pushing. Dear Vera, it's abroad. The girl he was probably asking if he could write right before he left. We've been swallowed by the jungle and 5,000 Japs waiting to kill us. Already I'm getting the feeling that these guys have just accepted death. Look at what rice without, 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 without. <laughs> They're stupid. They could have just put rice. <laughs> Ew. Think of it as meat. Next. They put it in there intentionally? I guess you do what you got to do. The Americans on this island, Marines, special force recruited from jails and insane asylums for blood <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 oh, so the army's there. They must have supplies and food and shit, right? They must have brought rations for these poor Marines that been out here. Right, they know they're not going to be bombing this area, so it's now or never. Man, that's a captain's thing, man. Just leave his shit. That's like some camp shit. Like, you're the army, you hear an air raid, you run away, and then you come back, you see the Marines taking all your shit. It's almost wholesome, but it's literally them just trying to survive. Peaches. I got the goddamn runs, you had to get peaches. Hey, it's like a little fruit juice, man. Damn, this dude's been out there taking a shit on that log all day. Your new nickname is Old Faithful. Fuck you, Peaches. <laughs> Old Faithful? <laughs> Felt like they were just bombing random places at night and they just happened to catch them. How would they know they were there? Oh my God. Some little Jap lady. She puts in five more grams of explosives. Man, that could have been us. As much as they've been through and they got to recollect themselves. That's how gruesome it looks. You spare this hombre, I need another runner. Get your shit and you back at the CP. Okay, Marines, let's get these supplies up the line. So is John Barenthal joining the other group? Just moving supplies? Can't have my platoon suffering. That was a gesture of a gentleman. We must really be fucked. Yep. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, if he willingly handed over cigarettes, it's almost like giving the cigarettes to the prisoners and Band of Brothers when you know they're about to die. It's one final good gesture. Ah. I got the whole fucking Jap army headed your way. First Battalion, hold your fire as long as possible. Over. The whole Japanese army is coming that way. What the fuck? How did none of those hit them? That's pure luck. That is pure luck. Nothing else. Oh, 
This is an impossible situation. No fucking way to get out of this. They don't have grenades or some shit? Where the hell is my glove? The boy, the tripod! I got you! Oh! Oh man, that thing must be burning his fucking arm! Oh! oh. Good shit, man. <laughs> Fucking Marines, man. What a great scene right there. This dude is badass. How do you stand out in a whole group of Marines? That machine gun is brutal. The kill count with that gun must be astronomical. Hey, Sergeant. Hand me that pail. Those are third degree burns. Whoa, that's from holding the gun? Everybody bringing Sergeant Rodriguez last night. Manny Rodriguez. I wish I could keep track. What the fuck is he doing? Is he stitching up his face? I hope they gave this guy some morphine. Fuck! Putting you in for a medal, John. We're gonna be moving west toward Lunga, up on the ridge. 164 is gonna take this position. They all deserve medals, but this dude deserves something for what the fuck he just did in that scene. Something that has to do with bravery. Something. No fucking way. It's gone, isn't it? Damn, he's out already? He was such a good soldier, too. Fuck. I'm enlisting tomorrow. The worst thing about treating those combat boys from the Great War wasn't that they had had their flesh torn. It was that they had had their souls torn out. Bam. Absolutely. The inside is gone. I see no spark, no love, no... No life. That would break my heart. No spark, no love, no life. And this is his doctor that doesn't want to see him this way. He could give a fuck about... Not, well, not that he could give a fuck about the heart murmur, but... That's not what worries him. Speak to the Lord for our comrades, killed when the battle seemed lost. They went to meet a bright defeat, the hero's holocaust. The hero's holocaust. Hopefully this guy didn't die and we only know about all the stuff that happened through his letters. Oh, that'd be fucked. How fucked are we now on Guadalcanal? Stand by. How fucked are we now on Guadalcanal? We're finally leaving this shithole. Look at the look on that dude's face. Ear to ear. That damn smile. And this dude, Rodriguez, died right before they were leaving. Man, he steps to the left instead of his right. He slows down. Yeah, but he didn't. He was where he was and did what he did. That's the same thing I was just speaking on with the crack helmets, man. It's a sign. Like, I should be dead. If it happens, it happens. We should get moving. Yeah. Just keep going. Just keep going. Eyes forward. Survive. Just pray and hold on. Hey, we heard there was coffee. Milk and sugar? Hell yeah! <laughs> you got milk and sugar? So how bad was it? Because I heard it was bad. I think that tells you all right there how bad it was. Guadalcanal? Everybody's heard of Guadalcanal in the 1st Marine Division. You guys are on the front page of every newspaper in America. <laughs> Your hero's back home. Whoa! And 
And that's not even why they did it. They didn't even know. They didn't even know. They were just trying to survive. Oh my god, these episodes are way too fast. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Pacific episode 2. Just like Band of Brothers, just bravery throughout. After clearing out everyone with his machine gun, and then going to clear the body mound, and then coming back, like, to the amazement of everyone else there, like, what was, what was that for? And it's like, bro, so you can see what's coming at you. I already knew that before the, I don't know what he is, a general commander. The guy said, you, you deserve a medal for this. Absolutely. Two episodes and we've already had like four scenes of bodies. When, when the machine gun is brought into play and you're looking at the aftermath, yet again, it, it is carnage. Bountiful. That machine gun was our saving grace, man. That thing needs to be for the Pacific. You, you might as well just hold this gun up over the word the pacific for this series because so far that thing has been the tool we've needed to keep as many people alive as we did i don't know what that specific model is called if you guys can tell me in the comments i would like to know seems like a very important gun it's it's nice to see the interactions between the marines they, they've had all types we saw how much it hurt them when one of their friends passed someone writing a letter back home him reading the letter to their friends they still have a sense of humor with each other we're gonna call you peaches we're gonna call you old geyser or old faithful i said old geyser oh my goodness but you guys know what i meant so the fact that they still have their sense of humor intact i can tell a huge part of the show is just like band of brothers man the bond between the actual guys doing the fighting R.I.P. Rodriguez, man, while we're on the topic. Didn't expect John Barenthal to be gone that fast. I remember in Band of Brothers, I'm going to keep referencing it, but it's hard not to. It's, it's hard not to just bring up stuff from that show as a reference point. Uh, I forgot which soldier it was, but he said that, you know, he stopped making friends with reinforcements or, or the new guys because they just kept dying. I think it's important to, to not stop making friends. The odds are they are likely going to die. They're likely going to pass. It's, it's a piece of your humanity that deserves to be indulged. It's hard to tell someone to, you know, not make friends just because they know they're going to die. You know, that can't be the only reasoning because they're going to be like, okay, you may feel that way, but I know that if I get close with this guy, he's going to die and I'm going to have to keep reliving these, this dread, this heartbreak over and over again. So I'd rather just wait till we're done here and then worry about making friends feel like something like that you can't help though you you'd have to actively like the guy said not try because you're gonna end up forming some type of bond or kinship with these guys just being in the situations you're in you have to actively say nope I'm, I'm good i'm just gonna keep to myself because it's gonna hurt when you die or and it's gonna hurt for you when i pass and from the doctor speaking with that guy that had the heart murmur we know mental and spiritual toll was apparent even back then he didn't want to see this kid come back and not and just be a shell of his former self like we see so many vets go through you don't really know until you actually experience it even the doctor and that's only because he's a doctor he's seen it on the highest level but even seeing it as a doctor that's still not the same as experiencing it they must not care because there's no way you can go there and, and just tell yourself you know it's not gonna happen to me i'm not gonna give into war i'm not gonna let it beat me oh it's going to beat you you just have to get back home war is definitely gonna beat you no question and that just brings us back to the opening monologue which is to just pray and hold on. I've seen enough anti-war movies and war movies and shows. Not a lot, but enough on this channel to know that's basically the tagline. Just pray and hold on. Because there's nothing else you can really do. You have your orders. You're not going to not do your orders. And then it's just pray and hold on. That's it. Episode 2 of the Pacific is done. I don't know how many episodes this series is. Hopefully it's 10 like Band of Brothers. I feel like I can get a lot of information and i'm not even worried about the entertainment factor i already know that's going to come it's by the same people you guys recommend some bangers i already know so if anything stood out to you in this episode or those anything i might have missed please tell me about it in the comments below i hope you enjoyed watching my reaction all i ask is that you leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet you can also vote on what i watch see full length reactions and get early youtube edits on my patreon through the link in the description you guys are the best we're a family you know that that's it for me until next time spread peace and love i'm out